All right, it is our final segment this morning with Gabriella Lira. Um, I just interesting that last caller talking about real estate and investment properties, and it's nice. I, I guess Nashville is still if it's when you talk about investing in property anywhere in the country, Nashville would be one of the areas you go to. But you're going to have to have some money to do it, to buy yes. the properties to do it, and then set it up, line it up to rent things out, or to turn it. Flipping is pretty much dead here, isn't it, for the most part? I'd say so. I think it's very expensive to flip here, but she also mentioned purchasing short-term rentals, and yeah. that is very popular here. Okay. I mean, short-term rentals now, they are selling, if you're buying a brand new one, anywhere from like 800 to 1.2, 1.3. So short-term rental would be what? I mean... Airbnbs. Gotcha. Okay, so and that's how much they're selling for now? Yeah. So what's happened is that the city of Nashville has dictated that only certain types mm -hmm. of zoning are able to be used as short-term rentals. Okay. So the supply of homes that fit into that zoning is very low. So there's a shortage of those. And when they come up, they can be very, very profitable if done right. Mm -hmm. And investors who love that type of investing because there is risk involved, of course. And we saw that when the pandemic hit and there was no travel. So guess what? Those were completely vacant. Right. And there were some people that had those who were calling me wanting to offload them immediately because now they were stuck with this huge mortgage payment that they were not anticipating. So maybe that's where you could have gotten a deal in some regard. I don't know, as much as you could. Did you sell some of those? I did. Yeah. Um, builders and the like right now um, still seem as busy. We think the inventory continues with the interest rates as it is. Um, the price, except for supply chain issues of materials, may be stabilized, come down a little bit. I don't know. Do you see that translating at all into the cost of homes when they're done now? Not much here. Not much here. Um, and I will say, I've talked to several builders recently, some that during the hot market wouldn't give me the time of day mm -hmm. because they thought, well, I could get the cheapest realtor to just put my property up and it's going to sell anyway. <laughs> now they're more concerned because they realize that in this more normal market, a skill-based realtor is critical to getting their products sold. It's interesting because you're right. At one point, I don't know if this was, was it last year, how many months ago where it was super hot at the peak, I saw a lot of for sale by owner signs. There, there's a neighborhood that I would jog through, and it's a nice neighborhood, and I saw for sale by owner, and I'm like, they're, they're just figuring, you know, it's so hot, someone will drive by and offer me money. That's right. And maybe if that worked out, great. But you need a skilled realtor, especially in a competitive market. I think most people would realize that, and that we have. We've always used that. Let's go to Cynthia. Cynthia, good morning. Hi, Cynthia. Good morning. Um, I have a question. I um, have a townhouse in uh, Rutherford County, um, North Rutherford County, and I I think the current um, value from the county is like two thirty or something. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking of maybe next year selling it because I, I I would like to sell it for maybe about another. 50,000, so maybe about 280 or so. Mm -hmm. but do, you, do you think that would be possible, and is it a good idea to sell it or just keep it and try to rent it out? So you don't, you don't live there right now. That's just something that you have as an investment property right now, or it's something you've owned for a while, but you live elsewhere? No, actually, I do live. Oh, you do live uh, there the now. Property. So you would have to, if you sold it, you would have to use some of that money to pay for wherever you moved to? Yes, probably. Okay, so, and, and, and I'm sorry. Well, just and whereabouts in Northern Rutherford? Are you near Christiana, or whereabouts are you? Uh, no, I'm in the Smyrna area. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Great. All right, go ahead. Okay, so I have many ideas for you. One, have me over because fifty thousand dollar jump in price in one year for a property that's in the two hundred thousand dollar range. <laughs> range is a substantial jump so i want to come in and see if there are any improvements that you can make to your property to have that value jump maybe a little kitchen renovation or you know some form of an improvement to get you that fifty thousand dollars and when i see your place i will be able to give you those recommendations and see if that's even realistic what i always say is if you don't need to sell it if you can get into your next place without selling it then 
That's great. That's a great position to be in, and you should keep it as a rental. But remember and be very aware, do you want to be a landlord? Because mm. there are responsibilities and challenges that come with being a landlord. And if you say absolutely not, then guess what? You need to sell that. But if you're open to that and getting some rental income, then why not? Yep, and as you said, uh, at some point, some of these homes in the hot market just sold as is. But boy, you can boost the price by doing you know, staging is what they call it. Oh, yes. But there are different levels of staging. That's there are right. some very basic, not too expensive cosmetic things you can maybe do to increase the value from, and I don't know if it will go up 50,000 in her book, but you've seen just a little thing. What's that, what are some inexpensive ways you can stage the home that really help? Paint. Just paint, just basic paint. paint. Go, go. I mean, at a very basic level, declutter and depersonalize. Yeah. Right? Just, take, Just make it yeah. look spacious and clean. People are really looking for that. So, very basic level, but then you can get into renovating kitchens and bathrooms, new flooring. Um, landscaping. So it just all depends on the property. Gabriella, tell them how they can reach you. You can reach me. My cell phone is always on me and I always pick it up. My husband doesn't always like it. 615-440-6327 or you can always shoot me an email at gabriella.lira at compass.com. It is interesting, the real estate biz. It it's hard work. You can be. It is. I mean, there's a lot of people who go into it and think, you know, this is a national market. It's going to be great, and it can be lucrative certainly if you develop a clientele. But it's competitive, and you're on, and you're on call 24 seven. It is I not mean, for you the weak of heart. Right. That's for you sure. don't have to be. You can pass on the call when it's coming through. But if you do that, yeah. you can miss on a sale. I mean, that's, that's right. what you do. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like the news business for me. I mean. Um, when I'm at home on the weekends or something, if a sheriff is calling me or something with some, I, I'm taking it. Yeah. It's just the nature of yeah, the Yeah, I, I strive to be the best in the business. And so I am going to take that call. I'm going to put in the extra hours. Yes, I've been doing this for a decade, but I still work evenings and weekends. But you like it. But I love it. So it's you, my you, passion. You do actually like it, don't yeah, I you? Love I mean, it. you really do like it. Mm -hmm. That's, you're lucky. Yes. No, oh, I like my job too. Hey, right, listen, Gabrielle. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on. Um, we'll see if uh, next time you come on, the market's changed even more. Yes. And we probably will, right? It's changing so rapidly. You have to have me on regularly. Uh, now. How about that? All right. Hopefully we will. Listen, good seeing you. All right. Good seeing you. Take a break. Be back with a programming note right after this.